full animated Venn diagram for use in a classroom. Uh, it's a really great way to show relationships and how different things are related to one another. So let's begin. I have a blank white keynote slide here. Of course you could do this with any theme, but I, I think it's most clear on a plain white or plain black background. I like the white. So to begin, I need to add some circles. Now I'm going to make a three circle Venn diagram. Um, you could of course do this with two, but I'm going to go with three here to make it a little more complex. So I have three plain standard circles. I'm going to select all of them. First thing I'm going to do is remove the stroke. I don't want any any border. Of course, that's just a you know aesthetic design, but I prefer no border. Um, and then for the size, I want to make them as big as I can, but without them overlapping off the edge of the slide. And what I found is that on a uh, 1024 by 768 slide size, which is what I'm using here, this is the standard iPad resolution, um, I'm going to use circles that are 400 pixels by 400 pixels. Okay, and that looks like this. So let me just take my three circles, I'm just going to line them up here. I can, I can tweak this later, but for the moment I just want to get them in the general spot where I'm going to want them. Okay, so I've got them all, select them all, and get them perfect. Now, uh, color is kind of an important thing here because we want the colors to complement each other. We want them to look good as they're going to overlap, and we're going to use some opacity. So the colors, it's an important thing, and you might have to play with it to get colors that are pleasing and that work well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start here with this first circle, and I'm going to go with a color fill of... I'm going to use, let's use this pink color. But I don't want it solid pink. Like I said, I want it some to have some degree of opacity, some transparency to it. So I'm going to change the opacity right here in the color window down to about 60%. And you'll notice it got uh, more see-through. Uh, if you go much lower than that, you really start to lose the color. Much higher, you're not going to get a nice effect. So 50, 60% works well. Okay, so I got that. Second circle, I need to pick a different color. Uh, let's go with a yellow here, and we'll put that at 60% opacity. And for the third circle, let's use a blue color. Okay, so I'm going to select blue, aqua, and 60%. There, so I have three semi-transparent circles, 400 pixels each, and at the moment they're completely separate from one another. There's no overlap, so at the moment I'm not really demonstrating any sort of relationship. Uh, and that's actually how we want it to start, because we're going to end up animating that relationship in on the next slide. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to add some text to each one. Now, I could certainly add a text box um, and then drag it where I want it, but I think I'm actually just going to double click on my shapes and start typing right in them. So let's do one, I'm teaching about rocks and minerals now, let's do one about mineral samples. So when you study minerals, you have to look at their characteristics, and one of the characteristic is uh, it's what's called luster. Is it a metallic or a non-metallic luster? So I want to demonstrate certain minerals that are metallic. So I'm going to say metallic luster. Now the white text doesn't look so good on the yellow background, so I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to remove the text shadow, which is automatically put on. Whoops. I'm going to make the text kind of a darkish gray color. Maybe uh, iron is good. And let's just change the font, because I'm not a big fan of Gil Sands. Let's go with Georgia. Okay, so that looks pretty nice. Now I'm actually going to copy that text and go over to my pink box and t paste it right in, and then we'll change this to another characteristic. Uh, let's make this uh, harder than glass. When you study minerals, one of the things you do to determine their hardness is to scratch it against a piece of glass. And uh, you can determine whether the mineral is harder or softer than that glass. Okay, And then I'm going to do a third characteristic in my blue circle here. And let's call this uh, something to do with how the mineral breaks apart. Uh, so let's say that it displays mineral cleavage, which means it breaks in a predictable way. Now I'll tell you something that's a pet peeve of mine is I don't like that these two, the text is on one line, and here the text is wrapped to two lines. So what I think I'm going to do is take this and add a break here, and same thing here. So now all three have text that's spread over two lines. In fact, I'm going to do this. Okay. It just gives it a nice consistent look. Now, this is my first slide. 
What I want to happen is I want the three circles to come together and overlap, and then I'm going to question my students as to what minerals could fit in the overlapping space. So what I need to do is I'm going to take my slide over here in the slide sorter and I'm going to hit Command D to duplicate it. So now I have two perfectly replicated slides. The difference being in the second one I'm going to make my moves. I'm going to move this up and in. Okay, and you got to kind of do this by feel. And this up and in. And you can see this really nice effect you get when the slides, when the circles rather, overlap. You get this nice uh, kind of color coming through. Make this a little further down. And it's a, a really neat effect. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of the circles, select them all, and just get it lined up nice in the center of the slide. Now, you'll notice what has happened is, let me just move these two down a little bit. Okay. What has happened is we have these overlapping regions. I have one here, one here, and one here. And so what this means from a pedagogical standpoint is that right here would go any minerals that are both metallic and harder than glass. That would go in this area. Here would be minerals that are metallic and that display cleavage. And here would be minerals that display all three. So if I were teaching this in a classroom, what I would likely do is add some letters. So maybe the letter A with a question mark. And again, let me just format that font. And maybe I'll make this white. See how that looks. And put that in this area. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And then copy and paste that and do a B for this area. Okay, let me just get these centered. And then duplicate it again and put a C in this area. Maybe move it down a little bit, a little bit more. Okay. Now, here's where the magic happens. Okay, to make a really neat effect, we want to actually transition from this slide to this slide with a magic move. And the magic move will cause the circles to almost animate together, to move towards each other. Now there are other ways to achieve this using the actions, but I, I personally think this is by far the easiest way to do it. Now, as I have it set right now, these three letters are going to appear automatically, and I actually don't want that. I want them to be able to build in one by one. So before I add the magic move, I'm going to have these three letters build in. So you notice I have A, B, and C selected. And I'm going to have them just kind of dissolve in maybe a half a second. And let's make sure they're in the right order. They are A, B, and C. Okay. And now I'm going to go back to my first slide and add the transition right here, which is the magic move. And you can kind of see it there in the preview what it looks like. But uh, let's, let's take a look at this full screen and see the effect we get. Okay. So my students see, okay, so we have three characteristics of minerals. Now, animate them together. Can somebody tell me what mineral could be represented by letter A, and by letter B, and by letter C? And students would then have to go and explore their resources and figure out what minerals would fall into these three categories. Now, of course, the content can be anything. It's more about the effect here. It's a very pleasing looking effect. Um, it, it looks really nice. If you play around with the colors, you can get all sorts of neat, um, neat colors on the overlap area. Um, and it looks, looks really interesting. Uh, in all honesty, if I had some more time, I'd probably play around with the colors a bit more. Because if you'll notice, there's not a lot of contrast between zone where the letter B is and zone C. There's not a huge amount of contrast there. So I might play with the colors to see if I can get those three to be a little more distinct from one another. But for the most part, it's a pretty nice look. Thanks for watching, and of course, as always, you can download this uh, Keynote deck from KeynoteClassroom.com.